Oyoverse has given some content creators early access to Natlan and the new characters. I'm not one of those creators, but thanks to their videos, I was able to do some theory crafting on these characters. So in today's video, I'll be giving my pre-release TC analysis on Moalani. Keep in mind that this is pre-release, so there may be things with Moalani discovered after her release that were not mentioned in this video. With that said, let's get started. First, I'll briefly go over Moalani's playstyle. I won't go too far in depth, as you've probably already seen her gameplay by now, but Moalani's gameplay is essentially like taking Yelan's elemental skill and making it a character's entire kit, as in, just like Yelan, with her skill, Moalani moves around tagging enemies before hitting them all with a large chunk of hydro damage, except Moalani does it as normal attack and not skill damage, and she does it three times. Since her gameplay is focused heavily on getting a few large hits, all of which have no ICD, she is very reliant on Vaporize to maximize her damage. I have looked into non-Vaporize teams such as Mono Hydro, but without the huge multiplier that Vaporize applies, her damage is just not going to be very good, so these teams were just way too weak to recommend. For Vaporize, there are several different ways that you can go about team building. The most important thing is going to be picking the right pyro applier to enable the Vaporize. Zhongling, Dea, and Jinyan are the three options for this. They each have their own pros and cons compared to each other. Zhongling has the fastest pyro application and largest AoE, but will have extremely high energy requirements as the only pyro, and her 20 second long burst cooldown can cause rotations to be awkwardly desynced. Dea has defensive utility with her damage mitigation and interruption resistance, and has very low fill time requirements while also not needing any energy, but you do still take damage with her active, and Moralani does not have any form of self-sustain, so relying solely on Dea to keep you alive can be very risky. And then Xin Yan is actually the pyro applier that I recommend the most generally speaking, although not in every team comp. Xin Yan works particularly well because she provides a shield to give the team some sustain, which will also apply AoE pyro application every 2 seconds. But on top of that, similar to Bennett, while Xin Yan's shield is active, she ap briefly applies self pyro to any character after they swap in. This is fantastic, as it allows Kazuha to absorb Pyro with that self aura, thus allowing him to get a Pyro absorbed burst at the same time as Swelling Hydro in a BB Vape team. Xinyan's main downside is going to be that her Pyro application is tied to her shield, and she does have one of the weakest shields in the game. This also means it'll be hard to get away with using a buffing set on Xinyan such as Instructors, since you'll want her artifacts, making her shield as strong as you can. But speaking of Xinyan enabling these BB Vape setups, that takes us to my first team recommendation, which is Moalani, Xinyan, Kazuha, and Mona. Mona is the fourth slot of choice here, because she provides Hydro Resonance, as well as a large buff. Her buff only lasts about 5 seconds, but Moalani's damage is very front-loaded, so she can deal a lot of damage in that time. And if you have Mona at Constellation 1, she'll provide an additional 15% damage to all Vaporize, vastly increasing her overall buffing and value. Since a lot of players already have Mona C1, or have her at C0 and can get to C1 with the Anniversary, my calcs will assume that Mona is C1, but just note that Moalani's numbers will be 15% lower without it. Now in this team, there's a very specific rotation you'll want to follow. In single target, the rotation is Xinyan EQ, Mona E-N1, Kazuha EQ, Mona Q, Moalani EQ, 2 shark bites, or Moalani E, 3 shark bites. It just depends on if you have your bar stuff or not. With this rotation, Moalani will put out the pyro from Xinyan and apply hydro, and then Kazuha will swallow that Hydro while still applying Pyro with his burst. And since Kazuha absorbed Pyro, even if Xinyan's shield breaks, you'll still have Pyro application. In AoE, 
this rotation doesn't work, as Mona's skill will cause Cosmo to absorb Hydro instead in AoE. But there is an easy rotation that we can do for AoE, which will be Mona in 1, Xinyan E, Kazuha E Q, Mona in 1 Q, and then switch to Moalani and do the same combo as before. You'll want to ensure you do follow that exact rotation setup, otherwise you'll be stuck with Hydro Aura on the enemies. This is a decently strong team. The DPS is respectable and the team front loads a ton of damage. With the damage of our burst and the first shark bite combined, Moalani is doing over 1 million damage in just her five, first 5 seconds of fill time. However, the buff uptime here is not great. Kazuha's buff falls off before the second shark bite, and everything else falls off after that. So while Moalani does incredible damage in just a few seconds of fill time, her damage drops off drastically after that, resulting in overall damage per, per rotation not actually being that high. The team still has a lot going on for it though, such as having both grouping and shielding, and Mona can hold prototype Amber for further sustain, since the only stat that matters on her is energy. And the problems that this team has with the damage falloff after buffs expires is much less of an issue if you get Moolani's first or even second constellation, as she will now be doing much more damage while the buffs are active. So the more you invest into your Moolani, the more this becomes her arguable, arguable best team. I would say once you have C1 Mona and a C1 R1 Moolani, then this is arguably the best team. But there are still other team setups that will work great for Moolani. The next one I recommend most is going to be Double Geo with Moolani, Xinyan, Chiari, and Kachina. Kachina's kit itself does not do anything to write home about, but she can provide 40% damage bonus buff to both Moolani and Chiari thanks to the new Natland support set. And Kachina also has a Geo construct, so Chiari will get both of her dolls in this team. So the team focuses less on buffing Moolani as much as possible, but instead having her do good damage while Chiari deals great sub DPS damage alongside her. Furthermore, Geo Resonance will increase the strength of Xinyan's shield by 30%, making it much less likely to break. You can use Xinyan on Archaic Petra for further buffing to Moralani here, but I would advise keeping Xinyan on Husk, since there is no Kazuha for backup Pyro application in this team. You do also need to be shielded for Geo Resonance, which is why Xinyan is still the Pyro I recommend most here. Overall, this team has very solid DPS while having a very simple rotation and comfort via the shielding, which is why it's one of the teams I recommend most. If you don't have Chiari, you can use this same team but with Mona instead of Chiari. It will no longer be double Geo, it will now be focused much more on Moalani's own personal damage. If you do have Mona at Constellation 1, this will be a bit higher DPS than using Chiari unless you have Chiari's weapon. But if you don't, the Chiari variant is going to be stronger. Although, Moolani's constellations will also make using Mone here more favorable than Chiari. Another vaporized variant that works well is going to be Born Vape with Moolani, Mona, Dia, and either Emily or Nahida. Dia is the choice of Pyro here because you really want Deep Words in order to buff Emily further. And if you put Deep Words on Xinyan, her shield will be much weaker. You can use Zhongling for this instead of Dia, but just know you will need to work with her massive energy requirements. And also do keep in mind that Dia will need to use Sacrificial Greatsword, otherwise her cooldown is not aligned with the rotation length. And for the Dantro, I do recommend using Emily over Nahida, because Emily's personal damage is just better than Nahida's buffing, unless your Muelani has constellations. And then another variant of Barn Vape that I have seen talk about is Muwalani, Zhongling, Farina, and Baizu. The concept here is that you'll use Zhongling's fast pyro application alongside Baizu's Dendro to allow both Farina and Muwalani to vaporize, since Farina's application is relatively slow. And in theory, if you can avoid losing vaporize on Muwalani in this team, it is extremely powerful, our strongest team by a good margin. But, 
it's simply not going to be consistent, and it loses out on massive amounts of damage for every Mist Bait. While Freena's application is slow, Mualani's Shark Fight animation does take a bit of time, and during the animation time, it can line up to where Freena vaporizes right before Mualani hits, thus stealing the bait. The only way to ensure that this will not happen is if you switch Farina to healing mode before swapping to a Mualani. But if you do this, not only is Farina no longer dealing damage, but she's also no longer draining HP for fanfare, so it's just not going to be good with a C0 Farina. But if you have a C2 or higher Farina, then this will actually work very well and be her strongest team. But if you had the choice of picking between investing into Farina constellations and playing this team, or investing into Mualani constellations and playing one of the other teams, the latter will result in the stronger team. And those are all of what I believe to be the best teams for Mualani. Double Geo with Xinyan, Kachina, and Chiari is great for simplicity and comfort while still being a high DPS team. And VB Vape with Mona, Xinyan, Kazuha is great for a team with both grouping and shielding as well as massive front load that scales extremely well with Moolani's constellations. With teams discussed, let's now go over the information you'll need to properly build your Moolani. Starting with weapons, her signature is optimal, but an R5 Sacrificial Jade is very close. With this weapon, however, you are almost guaranteed to overcap on crit rate, so in reality, Unless you can compensate for crit rate substats being useless by getting more HP and EM, Jade will be farther behind than shown on the chart. But if you don't have either of those weapons, your next best choices will be either Tomb of the Eternal Flow as a pure stat stick, an R1 Sacrificial Jade, or a Wood Sith. In a single rotation where Wood Sith has either the EM or damage bonus buffs, it will actually deal slightly more damage than Moolani's signature, but the damage does drop off tremendously in the next rotation, or if you roll attack percent. So if you can run rotate content and don't mind resetting for Widsith RNG, you can actually get away with using get Widsith instead of the signature. And then other options will be the new Fontaine craftable weapon, or Matba Mare, as F2P early game accessible options. And for artifact sets, getting the new Obsidian Codex set for Moolani is crucial, as there are no other sets comparable to it for her. Your closest option if, to use until you have the Codex set will be either Frothyly Dreams, two-piece two-piece options between HP, EM, and Hydro, or four-piece Heart of Death. But you do absolutely want to make sure that you do get an Obsidian Codex set over time. And then for main stats. There is a good degree of variety here. HP and EM signs both work. Hydro, HP, or EM goblets work. And crit damage, EM, or HP circlets work. The exact degree of difference will depend on your exact team and build, but I would recommend just not using two of the same main stat. So if you're using an HP Sans, do not use an HP Goblet, and if you're using an EM Goblet, don't use an EM Circlet, and so on and so forth. And then for the substats, you'll just want to focus entirely on crit damage, HP, HP percent, EM, and crit rate, while do being sure to not overcap on crit rate. Now, Moolani's Constellations. C1 adds 66% damage bonus to the first shark bite that Moolani does during her skill. This nearly doubles the damage, allowing it to deal ridiculous amounts of front-loaded damage, can easily be over 1 million with good enough artifacts. This is arguably the best C1 for any main DPS, and definitely worth considering. Then C2 essentially allows that first shark bite which will be enhanced by C1 to come out instantly, rather than needing to take a couple of seconds to stack it. This will also mean that she gets to her second Shark Bite then sh faster than she otherwise would, allowing it to benefit from buffs that would have normally expired by then, thus making this yet another huge increase to Moolani's front-loaded damage. C3 will increase her skill by 3, which is where most of her damage comes from, so it's a solid increase. 
Then C4 gives Moralani a good amount of energy refund, allowing her to burst every rotation, while also gaining 75% damage bonus on said burst, so that's yet another good increase. C5 increases the burst by 3 levels. Her burst it does hit hard, but this is the smallest increase of all the constellations. And then C6 makes Moralani's C1 buff apply to all of her shark bites and not just the first one. This is a large damage increase and it sounds insane at first, but in practice it might not often actually be that impactful, as it is not increasing the damage of her burst, nor her first shark bite, since that one already has the C1 buff. And at least in single target burst scenarios, the burst is more than likely already dead after taking both the burst and that first bite meaning C6 didn't actually do anything in those scenarios. But even if the boss wasn't already dead and does require a second bite, chances are the extra damage from C6 is still going to be overkill and not actually needed. However, where C6 should shine is in multi-wave content. Most of the buffs Moolani can use will be expired on a new wave of enemies, so she may not have the damage needed to take out the waves in a single bite. But with the huge increase from this C6, she may be able to deal the necessary damage. And multiwave seems like it may be Moolani's biggest weakness, so being able to possibly have that covered with C6 is very nice. So overall with Moolani's constellations, C2 is a great stopping point, but there's no harm in going up to C3, and even C4 if you desire. C5 is the only point I would consider a bad stopping point. And with all of that covered, I'll now give my overall pre-release an analysis on Mualani and how I think she'll fit into the meta. The Constellation Zero Mualani is a pretty strong DPS, but nothing out of line with current top tier DPS units. Her biggest strengths are that she looks to have strong single target, while also being good in AoE, since she will be able to hit up to 5 targets at the same time, as long as you mark them. This is a very noteworthy advantage to have compared to two other DPS in single target. But at the same time, Mulani doesn't seem to be doing quite enough damage to one rotate Barsus at C0. So she may not perform quite as good as true single target behemoths such as Alachino and Linny. However, once you get vertical investment into Mulani such as her C1 and C2, the amount of damage she front loads and her total damage per rotation becomes so high, that I believe she is without question the best single target DPS at that investment, while also still being good in AoE. Her main weakness is likely going to be heavy AoE content where there are more than 5 enemies spawned at the same time, as she just straight up cannot hit all of them. And also heavy multi-wave content, since a lot of the buffs Moolani uses will be expired for the next wave of enemies, as mentioned earlier, her damage falls off pretty hard after her initial front load, so waves of enemies with a respectable amount of HP can potentially wall Moolani pretty hard. And now it's also worth noting that Moolani's team options are currently severely lacking. The fact that characters like Xin Yan and Mona are unironically some of the best options says a lot about how much room her team has to grow. If nothing else, we can at least expect Moolani to get much better with the release of the Pyro Archon, since the low quality Pyro units she has right now are the biggest issue. Even if all the Pyro Archon provides with her own kit is attack buffing with off build Pyro, she would still be per able to provide 40% damage bonus with the new Netline support set. And if the Archon has even more buffing than that for Moolani, then Moolani's damage would be completely absurd even at Constellation Zero. But even just providing the 40% damage bonus from this set while applying off-field Pyro would be a huge upgrade for Mualani, so we can definitely expect her to get even better in the coming months. And that's all for today. If you liked today's video, please be sure to give a like and subscribe, and comment your thoughts on Mualani down below. Thanks, and goodbye.